Let's meet the players emerging from the tunnel right now. Representing America is Christina Picard, and representing Chile is Garrett Devaney. Guys, come in. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, good to meet you. Hello, I'm good to meet you. Okay, right. now I'm the referee. I want a good, clean, verbal match. All right? You are the lady here, America. Mm -hmm. So, heads or tails? Heads. Tails it is. <sighs> right, would you like to go first? Chile? Sure. I'll take okay, that. sell your wines. Okay, so here we've got two excellent wines from Chile. Um, you don't EQ sound very Chilean. Uh, yes, it's my, I'm the, this is the underdog. Don't let me put you off. <laughs> <laughs> so the EQ Chardonnay from Aratich and the Koyam 06 as well, both around 15 pounds. And very interesting, both bi uh, biodynamic organic wines, so no pesticides or chemicals in these glasses here. It's very good as well. Yeah, two excellent wines. Mm. The Chardonnay, very elegant, fine, a good food wine. Yeah. Koyam, something rich, supple, yeah. going to go with a lot of different dishes. Okay, okay, keep going. Um, two award-winning winemakers, yeah. Alvaro Espinosa, a uh, cult winemaker in Chile, doing mm. lots of great things in Colchago Valley. And then Matatich like as well. Oh. I'd like to know more, but I can't. Okay, okay, fine, sir. Very nice. <laughs> very good pitch. Are you ready, Miss America? I am, I am. Okay. Three, two, one. Show right. your country. For my white, we've got a Klein Viognier. This is a 2007. I chose this because it's so different from a lot of those heavily oaked Chardonnays that you get coming over to the UK. So it's, it's fragrant. It's got a gorgeous bouquet, loads of peach, honeysuckle. Goes perfect with spicy food, Mexican, some, some Thai curry, Thai green curry. Mm -hmm. For my red, I chose a 2005 Waterstone Merlot. This is from the Napa Valley. This one was from Sonoma County. Okay. So both Californian. This is really classic Merlot. So you've got loads of dark fruits coming through, black currant some anise, some leather, as well as some ripe plums. Ah. <laughs> Part time, two very good pitches. Right, you both kind of got equal verbal possession, as it were. Yeah. So now the next round you have to keep fighting each other to sell your country. Attack and defence. So, you were the first to kick off. Would you like to go again? Yes, please. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Well, I think, first of all, the most important thing to point out that the Americans have to send a beautiful lady to distract you from their high alcoholic Ooh. wines. Ooh. Yes, but American wines Ooh, are... Oh, yellow card, what do you say? <laughs> but we're so much glamorous, that's yes, why. Yes, you I are. Mean, only, only in America could you get Hollywood filmmakers and celebrities buying vineyards in America. David Beckham, Victoria well, I think Beckham. That's just getting off the point, I think. All, all the more reason not to buy the wines, because at least in Chile, it's the Chileans who own these wineries and selling those grapes and they're working in those vineyards, whereas the people who own the wineries in California and Napa don't even know anything about their wines. Okay, let's sell your wines. Go. <laughs> I'd like to start off by saying a really important point. The fact that no one here would ever have tasted Chilean wine if it weren't for America. America put New World wines on the map. That was because of the 1976 Blind Wine Tasting Challenge. I don't remember France and Chile ever... Chilean? Chilean? Who's Where's that? that? Yeah. What do you say? So basically, to get back to these, these are two beautiful wines. I mean, this Chardonnay is very elegant and the Koyam from an award-winning winemaker. And I think that if you try those wines against those two wines, you're going to see things with finesse, elegance you want at your table. It's very good, though. That's Probably but about most 15 of your percent wines, alcohol. Most of your lines rely on American oak. And you're talking American about history. Oak. You're talking about history. Mm. Chile, Chile have had vines for 500 years, which is before America, and they're still on their original But rootstocks. America has Not been making premium wines for far longer. Expensive you wines that no one can afford. If you, you had want a fascist want, if you want to buy, dictator. If you want to buy a Napa Valley wine, you've got to get your you got to get more than <laughs> Well, we had the biggest democracy. The, the biggest, biggest democracy in the world. About? While you had a fascist dictator, we were producing premium wines. I'm not going to break it up, though. That's good. This is good. So, so for Chile, you can get you, a good middle of, you the road wine. You, the, middle of the road wine, around five or six quid. Go, go sit on the sofa, watch people, a film, probably an American people, film. Which most people can afford <laughs> to buy. <laughs> right, but if you want a good bottle of wine to take to dinner, to impress your friends, you're, you can at least run the gamut with American wines. Yes, but you couldn't afford it. Stuff. <laughs> very good. Very good. I thought I'd let that run for a while. Yeah. 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 You could be a little bit angry there, Chile. Yeah, we could have got angry, huh? <laughs> we could have got angry. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> well, we've heard the pictures, and whilst the diners taste the wines, let's join Claude McKenna in the market as she serves. Claude is looking Claude. delicious. Now, earlier in the Market Kitchen Wine World Cup, Christina Picard here played for America, and Garrett Davney represents Chile. Now, guys, how do you think you did? Fabulously well. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Yeah, I <laughs> think <laughs> she was offside a few times, but I think I probably scored a few yeah, goals. Quite, quite, quite forceful yeah, there. Definitely, she, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Of America. Right, okay, so these are, if I should stop drinking them for a minute, the four wines that we've been looking at. Now, guys, who are you going for currently? Andrew? I'm going for Chile because I think America is just a little bit below the belt. Really? Well, that, you know. That's yeah. what I, that's that what I go job. for. We were told that to play a... dirty, I played. Gennaro? Well, America put a good fight, I must just say, unusual, you know, yes, America. 
Yeah, Allegra, what about you? Oh, well, on his uh, arguments of uh, economy and affordability, I'm going to go with chili. OK. All right. Okay. Uh. But it's not just up to us. The diners have decided, choosing their favourite white and red wine and their favourite performance. The votes are being collected and verified, and I can tell you that the winner is... <laughs> it's Miss America! Yay! Yay! Congratulations! Thank you. Commiserations, <laughs> <laughs> <Well, laughs> <laughs> but so both Group D finalists, Wednesday's winner, New Zealand, and today's winner, America, will be battling out at the end of the show for a place in the semi-finals. Find out if your favourite goes It's the moment of truth now as the winners of both Group D matches go head-to-head -head for a place in the semi-finals of the Market Kitchen Wine World Cup. Now, guys, the diners have got you this far, but it's now up to our expert panel of chefs, Allegra McEvity, Andrew Anad, and Gennaro Cataldo, and they will decide Group D semi-finalists. Okay. Now, representing New Zealand is Andrew Connor, and representing America is Christina Picard. Now, before your final pitch and your last chance to sell your country, let's take a look at your wine choice. First up for New Zealand is a medium white with lemon and lime flavours and a slight floral touch. And its teammate is a red with a hint of plum and boysenberry with a charming finish of white pepper. Up front for America is a unique dry yet fruity white with a powerful bouquet of floral and peach. Playing alongside is a classic Californian red, rich in dark berries, anise and touches of vanilla. OK, guys, now we've reminded ourselves of your wine choices. Now it's up to you, national pride, to sell your country, OK? Not to me, but to these guys. Are you ready? So ladies these first, guys. Miss America, are you ready? I am. America was the first country really to go up against the strong arm of, of European winemaking. We were the first country that exposed Europe to other winemaking countries. So we really were the start of the new world. So without us, <laughs> the... ah. it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay. That was pretty good. Are you ready? Mm. Not to me. To, to them. these guys. You ready? Guys, New Zealand makes uh, a wide range of, wi of wines and modern accessible styles that are a perfect match with uh, contemporary cooking. They're clean, they're well made, they're diverse, they're delicious, and they're good value for money. Right, okay. Well, it's decision time. So, Allegra, what do you think? Uh, well, I thought Christina's pitch about history was interesting, but actually Andrew's was about contemporary, it was about food, and my reason really is Riesling. Okay, Andrew, what about you? Well, I find it really difficult because I loved the New Zealand white but I preferred the American red. So I was a bit split down the middle, to be honest, and they're fantastic wines. But I went with America, because I think the pitch was very, very convincing. It was, wasn't it? Mm. But you know what? She's a part-time actress. <laughs> <laughs> so, deciding vote. Gennaro, well, hang on. Let's draw this out. Uh, You've got the deciding vote. Oh, well, Where are you going? Well, I'm with going, this. Uh, did you know where I'm going? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> lovely, it's called lovely bumbly. It's in a sweet and sour wine. New Zealand. Oh, very good, very good. Congratulations. Commiserations. Um, <laughs> well done. Well done. Very good.